What's up y'all, Shuffle. In this video for Darkest Dungeon 2, I'm going to help you out with some beginner teams that can give you a variety of play style, but also give you a solid chance of beating the first and maybe second confession. So this is really aimed towards the new players. This is for characters that don't have a lot of shrine unlocks. You know, I'm assuming maybe two max for someone and paths two. So like the first path is pretty reasonable. It's like three candles, I think. So we're going to talk about that. And if you have anything else to consider, then make sure you leave a comment below. As always, I want to thank one of our YouTube members at the start of this video. So I'm going to thank SpiderCon today or Fighter Sword. I know them as both, but they're a fantastic individual, very supportive, coming in at the tier two sub, but also just an awesome guy and really helpful in the Discord as a moderator. So thank you for the support. And if you want to get your own shout out in a video such as this make sure that you click the join button down below and get that along with some other perks starting off we're going to talk about the starter team the unusual suspects this is the one you first get at the start of the game and it's the one you're stuck with for a little bit you know you have to do probably a couple runs get some some candles then start buying characters and all that and i already have an altar of hope guide if you need that for your own purposes but this team is surprisingly good. Like, it comes out of the box okay. It definitely needs, like, there are a couple shrines that really help it out. But if you invest a little bit into this team, it honestly can go the whole way, like, through the game. Because it has everything. It has ways to fix itself positioning-wise. Three of the four characters can move. Man in Arms can always run back to rank one. It's got reach between the two rogues in the middle. It's got... A lot of support stuff with Plague Doctor, and it has a stress heal with Man at Arms. Between all that awesome reach damage and the sustainability and Man at Arms himself, it's a really solid team. So it's still okay to want to try new characters and unlock them and all that. That's the fun, right? But if you're stuck with this team or if you want to really maximize this, it honestly won't let you down. So it's okay to invest a lot into it. Those are the good things. The bad things for this team are, as I said before, for Plague Doctor, she really wants those first like two shrines, maybe three. So your first run is probably all going to her if you really want to be optimized. And that's because her, her second and third shrine give her Plague Grenade, which is insanely busted. Even though it didn't seem like it, it's such a an unassuming little skill, but it's really strong. And then you get Indiscriminate Science, which is another heal that she has access to. But what's really nice about this is it gets rid of negative tokens. So really good to keep everyone in a safe state and you give her a little more reach damage, which ultimately helps the team out as a whole. The other thing that kind of sucks about this team is that it really helps if Grave Robber has her first path. So she gets Deadeye as her first shrine or path unlock. I keep saying shrine, but this is pretty much Grave Robber Plus because she doesn't really... She loses like one or two damage off the melee skills, which... She only has two melee skills in this game anyway. It's Pick, which is still okay for getting through Block, and then Lunge, which you're not going to use with Deadeye. So it makes her range stuff stronger, so Throne Dagger hits harder, Poison Dart hits harder. You get to Glint, it hits harder. If you get to Pirouette all the way down here, it does a lot more damage, so it's... It's good, and then all you get in return is a movement resist penalty, but this character is not usually out of position anyway. She always has something to do. So with that in mind, the last thing is that the team kind of can, maybe, possibly, a little bit struggle if you go to the fetter. You don't have to worry about this in denial, but once you get to the second confession, the fetter is a selectable region. It's very blight resistance, and... These characters without unlocks don't have ways to control corpses, so that can also be bad. It still has ways to deal with it, like Indiscriminate Science is really good there. So is Ounce of Prevention, which she starts with, don't sleep on this at all. And Man in Arms is always just a good character. So it does a lot of good things, has a couple of weaknesses, but I mean, if you're going to start with it, it's really good. There is one change worth noting, though. If you want to swap in a cultist instead of grave robber so if you want to spend your 
immediate candles that you get from like the tutorial and get a cultist actually not a bad pick in here so what ends up happening is grave robber is pretty self-reliant she has self heals and dodge and all that but occultist is another healer he can heal other people than himself and if you use something like ounce of prevention the bleed off of weird really just doesn't matter and that's really nice and what makes the cult as good is he kind of fills in a lot of the gaps that the team had. So you have combo generation and debuffs with weakening curse. You get Volnhex first, I believe. And he's got Demon's Pull, very underrated move. And then Artillery, good for the reach damage. It's more consistent reach damage than Grave Robber pinging something every turn for three to six. He hits two things for three to six. And the other nice part about this is Ritualist is his first path unlock. And I would argue this is his best path in terms of, you know, just being a an all-around support unit with, like, some damage capabilities. If you want all the damage, it's Warlock, but really, Ritualist is super good, especially with the changes. So, you want to put a couple candles, like, literally, I think, eight into this guy. You don't even have to do any shrines for him. Like, this base kit is very strong, and it's also really good. So... Not a bad place to start if you want to change up the starter team a little bit, but you're not sure where to go. The third team I'm going to talk about is something that's kind of a spinoff of the original team, and this has Jester and Hellion. Admittedly, Hellion is not the strongest as a starter. You know, she has two attacks that are pretty good, and then you have Yop, which is okay, and then you have If It Bleeds, which is okay, and then you have Toe to Toe, which is solid. But this is a character that desperately wants to hit the shrines. However, there are some upsides. Ravager is her first path. This is the one that gives her a ton of damage and a little bit of survivability in terms of HP. It's really awesome. And between her having Iron Swan, which can hit rank 4, which is surprisingly decent, and her low health passive. So if she is under half, she has plus 25% damage. She's under a quarter, she gets another 25, so she goes up to plus 50% damage. So even though she doesn't have, you know, Howling End and Ravager immediately, she can still get some damage up there. It's just you have to feed some heals into her with uh, Plague Doctor eventually. But otherwise, pretty good reach, consistent damage, combo for bonus damage is solid. You get Highwayman, who still has Take Aim and Pistol Shot, so he's got a bit of reach, consistent damage. This is also a really good team to practice Jester when you first unlock him. His starting skills actually mesh very well with this kind of team because with Hellion up in the front and you're hitting with Iron Swan, she has kind of a blind spot to rank 3. So that one's a bit open, so it's only Highwayman that can hit that or Plague Doctor if you get her first shrines with Plague Grenade. And Jester consistently can pummel rank 3 with two different attacks. Got a really good single target stress heal. Got a decent bleed, and then he unlocks another bleed later. But also Battle Ballad is really good for keeping the team in formation. So with the starter team, it has Man at Arms who can run up to the front. And then you have Highway Man who can, you know, jump forward to space. And with Jester, he can jump back and forth, and he can push other people up to the front and what's nice too is you get the strength token so you have hellion's low health passive going or take aim with your crit token with highwayman then you can just dump a strength token onto someone and they hit way harder so it's it has a lot of synergy with itself and like i said it's good practice for using someone that's somewhat complicated like jester and the other nice part about this is between Wits and Fade, he goes back and forth in these ranks here. I mean, he can go up to the front too. And then Hyo Man can use Dual Savants. That's a forward one. Push up here, or you can, you know, use Battle Ballad. But also, Plague Doctor doesn't get messed up if you're jumping like this between the spots. So the team doesn't fold in on itself if it gets out of position, at least not easily. And like I said, it can kind of keep itself in position as well as put out some consistently decent damage. Like I said, the only real issue is, again, like the other team, that you really want to get Play Grenade from the second shrine as soon as possible. So you kind of solidify the reach deficit. 
There are a couple more weaknesses to talk about with this team. The first is that Jester has hard shrines. Like, his shrine battles are among the toughest in the game. So they might take you a couple tries, and that might set your progress back. And the other is, as I said, Hellion really wants her shrines to unlock stuff. And so, really, all of her good heal moves come from there. So, Adrenaline Rush and Raucous are both unlocked. And you really want to push to those relatively quickly. This fourth team is one that I'm trying to give you some variety with in case, you know, you like someone like Leper. He's a fan favorite. And we're adding some support for him as well as just a team that has some decent synergy with itself. And so the first, we talk about Leper, probably the best starting five skills in the entire game. It's actually crazy. He doesn't need anything else after this. Like, some of them are fine and good. Like, Intimidate's great. Bash is great. You know, Break has its place. The rest of them are okay. But you start with Chop, Withstand, Solemnity, and Reflection, as well as the ability to destroy corpses. So he's pretty loaded when you first get him. And honestly, he doesn't need a... Sh he can be like the last person that gets shrines. So it's pretty awesome with that. Even though Leper has an issue hitting through blind, we have two sources of combo tokens. First the smoke, actually three. First the smoke screen, next is Jester, and then the third one is Weakening Curse with Occultus. And I did swap in a move here. I'm just going to assume, because he can't use artillery in two. So I'm going to assume that you might get his first shrine at some point, and that way you get Vulnhex, which is great. Both curses are amazing. And you can do a lot of stuff with that. And so with Jester, same stuff as before. He can keep people in position, throw out combo tokens, blind, stuff like that. And also stress heal. And then we have Bonnie, aka Runaway, who... It's funny because we meme on her for having like three good skills. And the three are Firefly, Smokescreen, and Cauterize. She starts with two of them. And so with the new Run and Hide buff, which makes it a lot better... You know, you kind of give up Searing Strike, but she can't use both of these at the same time anyway. And with that in mind, we just shove her into rank 4, where she throws Firefly every turn and smoke screen as needed. The other nice part, too, is this team, really low candle investment, really low shrine investment, too. So it doesn't take too much to get it rolling. And if you put in some candles to get the first path on each character, you get... The ones that are arguably among the strongest. So you get Tempest, which does some really good damage, gives you disease immunity almost because it caps in 95. You get Debuff Res, fantastic. Ritualist, as I said before, another amazing path. You get that early on. And then you have Jester. I forgot to talk about this before. Virtuoso. This is the Jester Plus variance, and you get that first. And then finally, with Runaway, you get Arsonist, which is also her best pass. So this team can get moving with just a few candles on each person and minimal shr minimal shrines. So it's it's good. It's surprisingly good. It struggles with rank four damage if you don't use Demon's Pull, but you should be using Demon's Pull constantly to not only get things up to the front to hit them with Leper and Combo. Get rid of corpses just to mess up the enemy's position even more. But yeah, rank four reach is a bit of an issue for consistency's sake. So make sure that you uh, adjust it accordingly if you need to. Like putting runaway into two. Apparently there's a team name, you know, and then having a cultist who can use artillery again. The team does have some drawbacks. The first is that they don't deal with getting moved very well because Occultus no longer has a way forward. He used to, he doesn't now. Jester can move himself around, but Runaway can only move backwards until you get Ransack. And Leper, if he goes to four, he's just in trouble. So the team can get dismantled by a really bad shuffle as well as it is squishy starting off. Like you have three of the squishiest heroes in the game. And then you have, you know, a taunt tank who's very slow. So it's kind of hard to keep it all together sometimes. The final team I'm going to propose is with, you know, three of the four starter characters again. That's just really showing how good they are. And we're swapping in Flagellant to make this a blight team. 
And what's really nice about this is that Man Arms has hold the line, so we can always get straight back to the front. And that's really important because Flagellant wants to be in two. So as long as you can keep shoving him back to two as needed, he still gets Slash and pretty good, honestly. And his first shrine is Acid Rain, so it kind of solves some of the reach issues. Stacks really well with Play Grenade as well. But if you don't want to go like super back rank oriented with uh, Plague Doctor, her first path is uh, Surgeon. So if you want to just spam incision, you can. And then the moves get a bit weird. So I kind of don't recommend it early on. Usually Wander is better. And you can put her in 4 too if you want to do it that way. But yeah. Again, basic Grave Robber, one shrine, three, four candles, whatever it is, five to get the first uh, path. And it's got a lot of light synergy, struggles in the fetter, and, you know, does some cool stuff. It's a, it's a fun team to run this because when you start unlocking stuff, you know, with a team like this and you get down to Necrosis, then it gets really fun because you just hit the entire enemy team for, you know, a bunch of damage. And I was going to include the two new DLC characters, but I also didn't want to for a couple of reasons. One... It's a little tricky getting them to be super effective when everyone's bad at the start. And then two, not everyone's going to buy the DLC when they get the game. So I don't want to suggest something like that. But otherwise, I mean, Duelist is the hardest one to plug in because she's really complex and requires some understanding. Crusader, you can just throw in to any front line. He's fine. So that's it for the star teams. Let me know your thing down below in the comments. Let me know if it helped you. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.